I was really excited to hear that um, there was going to be a new sensor. I was excited to see what, what we could do with it, see if we could get it to break. My name's Ari Wagner, I'm a cinematographer. I'm Eric Messerschmidt, cinematographer. Mi nombre es Bárbara Álvarez y soy directora de fotografía. Mi nombre es Augusto Tejada, soy director. La cámara parece ser bastante amable en relación al rango dinámico. Eh, la sensación que me dio hasta ahora es un, de una imagen suave eh, que se puede manipular bastante. Y eso para un fotógrafo es, es fundamental. My name is Banavas Bani Emori, and I'm a cinematographer. My name is Tokbe Alaki. I'm a director. I was like, okay, this new camera. I'm going to take it to Lagos Tropical Sun in the heart of Lagos. I hope it doesn't pack up. I hope it can see anything. We're literally shooting in scorching sun because that was the allocated time that we had to film those scenes. And the sky is just white. I said, you know what, let's frame something. Let's have some really big highlights and some shadow. Let's just hold it in the same frame. Let's see which one of it is not going to look good. And everything looked good. I'm like, okay, this seemed to be really, really nice. And I saw what it did to the skin tone, my goodness. The highlights were rolling off pretty easily and, and it looked really nice. So even with the scorching sun, the Aries dynamic range can handle it properly. My name's James Friend, and I'm a cinematographer. My name's Mike Valentine, BSc, bad scuba cameraman. A good balanced image should be able to have the darkest of dark and the, the brightest of highlights. But we wanted to shoot directly into the sun. We wanted to shoot extremely high contrast environments. To be able to have the pure sun and then still have an exposure of a guy wearing a black shirt and black trousers, I thought, well, I shouldn't even really ask James to set that shot up because I thought it would push the system too hard. Shot のぐち I'm Jesse Wong, cinematographer. Hi, you are. My name is Arden Se, director. Mama. We shot through the window, directly to the sunlight a lot of times, but we still got all the details from the outside, all the backgrounds, all the rooftop tiles. I think it really opened my mind up to what I could get from available lights and the latitude that it gives me now. It 
especially if you're trying to work with available light or you're in a really contrasty situation. It helps in terms of how much fill you feel like you need to use. You know, I didn't use any fill light at all. Um, maybe a little bit of passive bounce here and there, but very little. And I was able to expose the entire sensor and exploit as much of it as I could. So it, 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 it was great. I mean, the camera performed ex extremely well. We had him doing underwater cutting. With a very, very bright um, torch. The same sort of intensity as like a welding torch, which normally would clip very quickly. We could actually see the exposure of the molten metal burning at a thousand degrees. It handled the highlights beautifully. The very center of the torch would, would naturally clip, but it clipped in a very cosmetic way, something that looked very, very, very pleasing on camera. To have it in one shot with the detail in his eyes was unbelievable. I had a very difficult time getting this camera to clip at all. I was able to work quite comfortably with overexposure and, and not, not really worry about it so much. I think the main defining aspect of this camera is the extra two and a half stops exposure. It enables you to be a little bit more daring with, uh, with your visual storytelling, really. Je m'appelle Christophe Graillot, je suis directeur photo. My name is Nicolas Sumara, director of photography. My name is Seamus McGarvey, I'm a cinematographer. J'avoue avoir une petite attirance vers le, le, le Super 35, surtout parce qu'aujourd'hui, le Super 35, il nous offre la deuxième partie du couple, c'est qu'il y a une caméra, mais il y a aussi des objectifs. There's a bit of nostalgia or like reputation of kind of some lenses have a kind of aura about them. <laughs> Et l'univers du Super 35 nous permet d'explorer toute l'historique optique sur le marché de, de, qui existe un peu. We shot a little bit of this on a yeah, 25 to 250 on Genoa, which I really love. I use anamorphic Hawk Class X lenses. I was just interested to see how this looks with the new sensor, the fall off, and how it just performs compared to the to the old cameras. Knowing that this camera was super sharp, super clear, clean, and high speed, I wanted to bring some character to the lensing. So I used uh, DNA lenses, and they brought a kind of a, a little bit of softness. I love Super 35 as a format. I love communicating focal lengths with directors, and I, you know, I know Super 35 focal lengths really well in terms of, you know, in terms of how they translate to field of view, etc. So it's nice to see it make a return. Yeah, I guess for me, I'm always trying to mess up the digital image a little bit. It's nice to have a little bit of separation from reality. Textures was probably the thing that kind of excited me most about the new sensor, this idea that you could um, have a texture that was being captured by the sensor um, and what that could kind of bring. And yeah, from what I've seen so far, it's a super pleasing look and quite unique. Pour ce projet, sachant qu'on avait beaucoup de peau à l'image, j'ai cherché quelque chose d'assez doux parce que j'ai pas filtré devant la caméra. Donc je voulais voir justement dans le traitement ce que ça pouvait faire euh, le cosmétique. Et encore une fois, ce que j'ai vu sur les peaux était, euh, fonctionnait super bien. Et je trouve intéressant de pouvoir, dès la caméra, déjà offrir des, des, des options pour, pour pouvoir un, un peu s'approprier le, le, le capteur et en faire un petit peu ce qu'on veut par rapport au projet qu'on développe. Cinematographers have some love for grain, or a lot of us at least have. The texture that we've been using uh, was called nostalgic. So this is now a texture that has a certain feel to it. A little bit different than what you had before when you've been pushing the ASA. 
Uh, I must say, I did see one of the other films that had the nostalgic texture, and I got very jealous because it looked absolutely spectacular, um, something which would be very hard to actually apply in the grade. Personally, I like the idea that it is embedded in the image, and why not, frankly, why not? If everyone's on board with it, then yeah, shoot it. You know, that's why we're cinematographers. We, we just don't want to capture the, the panoply of possibilities and, and decide it afterwards, or God forbid, anybody else decide it afterwards. We've shot with just the firelight. The new Alexa 35 handled the highlights of the fire and the extreme darkness of the beach and the night sky beautifully. We had a fair boy versus a dusky girl in the frame. I had to put absolutely no lights and I got complete information on the actors' skins. Their skin tones came out just perfect. I'm Neha Parthi Matiani and I'm an Indian cinematographer. In a way, with night exteriors, your stop is often defined by your budget. In the night stuff, which we're doing at 3200, with the ES, the noise feels a lot more similar to 1600. I don't think I've ever taken my meter to 3200. <laughs> when we were on the beach, we lit with a special effects fire, and you know we wanted that natural kind of outline of, of her against the horizon. So we had to shoot it at magic hour, and we completely lost the light, completely. I put the ISO at 6400 on the low noise setting. The camera can see in the dark, so people were walking around on set, like, where, where are we going, where are we going? Because it was so bloody dark. But on the monitor, we still had a brilliant exposure. For 6,500 ASA, it was surprisingly very low noise, actually. We did an uh, entire night exterior scene with 2560 low noise mode. We didn't have time and there's a lot of restrictions so we cannot use any lights. We just use the street lights and all the lights are from the huge buildings. The director was constantly asking if there's still enough light to work and I was saying, well, I don't really 100% know because I have never worked with this camera before, but I think uh, it's, it's pretty awesome what you can pull back and how well it looks, but also just like how then the colors performing, that it's not all just like really shifted in a certain direction, but it can work with it pretty well. That was um, very nice to see. When we shot today, Eric's like, yeah, let's hardly use any lights. And that's a good opportunity on a job like this because we had to be run and gun. We have to move fast. We had to do what the light was doing in the house. And he was still ending down because it saw so much into these rooms. Definitely the ISO is a whole different world. Um, and I think something will take me a moment to recalibrate my brain too, but knowing that say 3200 is a totally usable ISO versus an emergency <laughs> situation ISO. It affects um, creative decisions on set and how you tell the story and, and how you light things logistically. So it can impact schedules, it can impact budgets. I wanted to see how it handles Indian skin in Top Sun, how it handles colours in overexposure, and the saturation was absolutely mind-boggling. We chose uh, an Indian festival called Holi, where we play with colour and it's, it's something that is technically played through the day. You start out in good light when you start shooting, but then you face Top Sun in India. I think the fall-off in terms of contrast from the highlights to the shadows is beautiful in the camera. Even in overexposed areas, the colours are beautifully saturated. And where we've used UV lights, I got perfect saturation on the colours. Even the blacks in the space and the whites, the whole contrast between them was just amazing. In the flower room and, and on the day exterior, we had really nice natural skin tones. No excessive magenta, no excessive green. It was, it was quite balanced and flattering. There's no better skin tones at all. Even film stocks and stuff, which are great, but there's still a graininess, there's a different look to it. And I shoot a lot of faces, a lot of real people, a lot of lifestyle stuff, and skin tones to me are everything. 
the Ari does so well for black skin tones. We've been seeing details even in the shadows. It feels like film to me in terms of how it registers the color. And that's the first time I've ever seen that in a digital sensor. And it's really exciting to me to know that I, I don't have to be afraid of saturation in this sensor, this new camera is, is quite beautiful. Elegimos locaciones bien diferentes como para tratar de llevar al límite a la cámara esos fondos con montañas con una textura increíble y unos colores increíbles. No solo es el rango dinámico de la cámara lo que se está moviendo a prueba, sino también el rango dinámico del color, digamos, el rango de color. Tenemos un cerro de 14 distintos colores. Cette caméra promettait plus de richesse dans les couleurs, plus de séparation des couleurs, et on l'a pris au mot. Dans notre projet, on a été assez, euh, assez presque extrême dans les couleurs, avec des couleurs très franches, très mélangées, des nuances très très marquées. Cette caméra, j'ai l'impression qu'elle a suivi notre projet, et, euh, et tout ce que j'en ai vu jusqu'à présent m'a complètement séduit. I found that an emergency flare is extremely bright and a primary red color. So it's naturally, especially on digital, extremely hard to photograph. When you go underwater, red is the first color to be absorbed. It's the first color to go and it goes a very uncosmetic gray. Turn around, react. To have that as our light source, to light his eyes. I mean, James and I got very, very excited when we saw the results. It was just uh, amazing. The camera completely blew my socks off. It retained all the information, um, and it, it was magnificent, really. The basketball scene is filled with moving stage light uh, in red color. It's a disaster for any camera. However, the result was stunning. The camera separates the red very clearly. We did all the interiors, exterior and um, night day thing with all the red elements in it. We had a lot of fun uh, exploring all the red options and tighter options. And we put as much as we can into this film. We can still see the different level of different red on all the different uh, surface. Color saturation up towards the high end of the exposure band was really impressive. We had these pink curtains in one room that had a little bit of minute detail in them, and it held all of that detail and all of that color saturation right up to the edge, which was amazing. And not only did the camera maintain the color in the highlights, but it maintained the difference in the color separation. It was able to capture everything naturally, but also it reproduced all those colors uh, in a predictable way, which is important. I've seen the images in the eye, but I've seen the images in the eye, and 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 I've seen the images in the eye. 시력이 안 좋은 사람에게 안경을 씌워준 느낌. J'ai senti que cette caméra nous a suivi dans nos recherches. Ce que j'ai vu était tout de suite sexy à l'image. There's a unique difference that makes the imagery way more beautiful. For me, it's the best sensor ever ever made, best digital sensor ever made for motion picture.